As an investor, should we be comfortable with what's happening with Skycoin? Price of Skycoin no longer has anything to do with our, our operations or software development. We're decoupled. I know who these people are. I know what they're doing. I know their operations. I'm talking to all the people that are fighting with them. By attacking me, they're digging their grave. As soon as they lose control of the media, that this is going to devolve into a foreign funded proxy war. And that's why I'm in China. I don't want to deal with the civil war and this political party and that, you know, BLM and QAnons killing each other. I'm just sick of this shit. Anything that they have that they can do to us, we have 20 responses to crush them. If we were to put that on the stock market, it would be a $2 billion public trading company. We're competing with Qualcomm, Broadcom, Arm, Intel, AMD. I don't want to be stuck in the freaking crypto market. Now, I'm not saying yes. this to be confrontational. I'm saying it's like, really, the people are asking, what are we waiting for? What's next? With Skycoin, are you thinking that perhaps some of the threat perceived or actual with respect to Skycoin is perhaps Skywire? Okay, so we have a lot. So I know we're, we're, we have the social media and that's a severe threat. If we went on that, I think we would have like kinetic action. I don't know if that started to take off and gets 100 million people and we're in the middle of the development and that was invoking a civil war and they're killing political dissidents and you know there's blood in the street. I, I don't think personally there's anything they can do to me in China. Actually, it'd be very difficult to do anything legally to me or financially. And I don't think that they're gonna, there's anything that they do, can do to disrupt Skycoin's operations. I think that the, you know, they can interfere with certain things, but we're actually not relying on almost anything. We even, and you notice that the price for Skycoin goes up, goes down, whatever, but it, it, the price of Skycoin no longer has anything to do with our, our operations or software development. We're decoupled. And if Skycoin was to be, to be destroyed, like the main company, the development would still keep going because of the people in the background. They have a lot of Bitcoin. They're not publicly identified. They're anonymous. I don't even know the, the people who they are. Like I might know their first name. I've met them. But if you ask me where they live, what their last name is, how to contact, you know, even how to contact them, it's very difficult. You're not going. They're not going to be able. And these people, by the end of the year, the Bitcoin's going to be at 100,000 to 150,000. So you're dealing with a bunch of very rich, technically savvy Linux user, crypto people who a lot of them did consulting for the government or defense contractors who are very into OPSEC and security and who are prepared, have millions of dollars and are prepared to fund other project teams within Asia or Russia or Belarus, even multiple project teams to continue development because we're open source. So I don't think in terms of if they were to attempt to disrupt our operations, I think that it would backfire and it would just result in 12 other projects that are independently funded doing exactly the same thing we did, but with more money and more developers and more teams. But, but um, and even if we continue and we're not doing progress fast enough, they might decide to do that in parallel anyway or use architectural designs that we developed over 10 or 10 years of, of trial and error. So I don't, in terms of the long-term goals of Skycoin, I think that, you know, basically a decapitulation strike, like they're going to come after me personally. And they think that by attacking me personally, they might be able or threatening me, they might be able to stop development or stop what we're doing. And that's absolutely impossible. And I think that's going to backfire because it's going to result again in decentralization. It's going to result in this guy who has $500 million of Bitcoin. He's going to find some guy in Russia and say, hey, take this over, hire eight people to do this. And they're going to have another team in Belarus. And what are they going to do about him? And it won't just be one team. It'll be 12 independent teams by different people. And, and they're not going to be able to, and the, the developers are going to be a non. I was forced in 2007, I'm exposed personally, because I was forced in 2007, you know, 2017 by the Chinese investors to be the white face on the company, to be public, to go to the roadshows, and to, to attempt to explain to the public what we were doing and why to do that. I don't think personally I'm the best spokesman. I don't think I'm good at communicating with the public. I don't think I'm good at selling Skycoin. I'm not allowed to say, oh, buy Skycoin, you're going to get rich. They want me to say that. I can't say that because legal reasons, lawyers, whatever. So I haven't even been effective at promoting Skycoin. And, um, and so I'm exposed personally, but I think these people are idiots. I honestly, I know who these people are. I know what they're doing. I know their operations. I'm talking to all the people that are fighting with them. And once their enemies know who they, a lot of the people even that are being attacked by them don't know who they are, but once they know their names, 
They can then go after them. They can sue them. They can subpoena them. They can get them arrested, investigated. They can get them indicted. They can create blogs. They can leak information about them. They can do background checks on them. They can they can tear these people up. And and some of these people have gone to prison before for this. And once it's publicly known that these companies are operating as extortion rackets, you know, for the purpose of extortion, their whole operations are going to be unwound very rapidly. And by attacking me, it's going to just they're digging their grave. I really don't un think that these people think that are idiots, but they think well, I'm stupid, but they don't know that I've worked for these people, that I've met them personally, and that other people in my network have met them personally. And I'm not the most dangerous person in my network. I'm just a software developer. And I know I'm not the, and I'm not, they have a lot also. What's very funny is as soon as they started attacking us, their enemies came to us immediately. There's a, you know, these corrupt people, there's not, you know, it's not like you can go around for four years in DC screwing people and running extortion rackets and not have enemies. And their enemies are judges, prosecutors, district attorneys, um, lawyers, companies that were screwed by them, individuals, software developers, uh, foreign governments, uh, people in China, Russia, billionaire oligarchs. Like, I don't understand, you know, personally, from my perspective, I don't understand how these people can be this stupid. Like, how could they be, like, they think that they can do anything and that they can get away with it and that they scam 20, 200 people so they can do the next one. Kushner's father, I'll give you an example. He was, he had an, a political enemy. He would just hire a prostitute, have the prostitute lower someone back into a hotel room, film them having sex, and then would send the videos to their wife or something and, and laugh at them. And he did this to 300 people. It's a joke for him. Like, ah! Like, this is what these guys do, this Kushner guy. Very low, very dirty, Kushner's father. And he did that to 300 people. And when you do that to so many people and nothing happens to you, you don't get sued, you don't get prosecuted, you don't get subpoenaed. They just keep doing this over and over and over and over, and they think I'm invincible. And then Chris Christie, he screwed the wrong guy. That guy went to Chris Christie, who I was, I think, governor of New York and head of the Trump campaign. And Chris Christie had Kushner's father thrown in prison. Just boop, and he's a felon now, okay? And he's pissed about it, and he's angry, and he's like, oh, why'd you do that? And, you know, and Kushner's, you know, got Chris Christie kicked out of the Trump campaign because um, Chris Christie had, so uh, Chris Christie was going to be Trump's, like, head of staff, right? Because he helped the campaign. But then Kushner, tr uh, Trump's son-in-law, had Chris Christie kicked out of the Trump campaign because Chris Christie had his father thrown in prison. So you see, as soon as, uh, as soon as the Trump, they got him in the power, he screwed all his allies and they're all fighting and he didn't really have a, police, a cohesive political base. All of his people were all fighting each other and infighting and all, you know, a lot of stuff. So I would, so that's one of the reasons he was so ineffective is after they got in the power, it would just become a blah, 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 blah. And he can't really fire his family, right? So you can fire the other people, you can't fire the family. So there was a lot. So when you look at these political people, a lot of them are more politically exposed to Kushner and I think one of the long-term goals is the elite, these, these people, they know that these, these people need to reveal themselves, that they're dirty laundry, how corrupt they are. And it's better if they are in the public. If they're hiding, what can you do? But if they're in public and the public is very angry, you can just get all of them in at once and sweep them out, the media, the company. The, so if you were a national security strategist and you were trying to clear out the United States of all these dirty people and the blackmail and the you know, and the extortion and the congressional cesspool. One thing you can do is just go and tell people like, it's really this corrupt. You can let it into the public, into the media, and you can let the people reveal themselves, reveal who they are so that people know like this guy supported us. This guy's a whore, right? This guy, you know, they're, and, and you eventually get to the point that you're going to have a, a revolution and you just have this very convenient list of all the people that screwed the public. And instead of knocking them off one by one, it's, easier to get rid of them all at once right so if you were if you were in this situation so a realistically uh you know from a defense industrial base perspective if you had so many of these corrupt people in such high positions and and they were you know look how hard it was to prosecute epstein for instance you know and, and this thing and how many how much you can get away with if you have political power it's just easier to mop you know start a revolution and mop them all up in one swoop than it is uh, to go after them one by one. So 
I don't really know what they're going to do or what the strategy is going to going to be or at what point the breaking point is going to be. But I know that as soon as they lose control of the media, that this is going to devolve into a foreign funded proxy war. And that's why I'm in China. I don't want to deal with the civil war and this political party and that, you know, BLM and QAnon's killing each other on the street and whacking each other with baseball bats and burning 7-Elevens. And I, I, it, it's going to get to the point where it's going to be very violent. People are going to retreat into private communities. The people are going to create their own communities for defense. They're going to control who they associate with. They're going to create their own communication networks, their own uh, own political groups, their own political opinions and philosophies, their own food supply, energy. And they're going to start decoupling from basically the globalist system and go back to recentralization. And it could be... Um, I think that's the most it, the most realistic scenario is devolution. You know, it's these, and it's going to be a violent decline in the standard of living and a uh, increase in commodity prices and fuel. And we're going to there's going to be violence. It's I, I can't you know, this is um, and some of these people, if they have money, they're going to come someplace safe like China. And I'm going to see these corrupt people. I'm going to see them and I'm going to go to the go to the restaurant and they're going to be sitting on the table across from me and with their little like, you know, two million dollar Chinese investment visa, you know talking to the other corrupt people bitching about this or that, you know, and I, it's that, you know, I'm, I'm going to be realistic about that. That's probably what's going to happen. And the people who don't, who aren't at that level, who may be a small businessman or something, they're going to go to Ukraine or Russia or Poland or Hungary or Russia, you know, or something. And they're going to try to rebuild their life and build this, you know, company, small business, online consulting, people with online income, you run a blog, you might just go to Koh Chan, you might go to some little island in Thailand, sit on the beach, write in your blog, do your online business, cut your expenses, wait it out, you know. So, you know, different people are going to do are going to do different things for security. But there's going to be civil war, not wars between countries, but internal strife and uh, violence, instability. And, you know, personally, I know people in L.A., and they live in a five thousand dollar a month apartment, and they go in their parking garage. They have a private garage, like people can't come in and out. But someone waits for the garage to open. They sneak in, and they sit in the bottom, in the dark with a gun. And my friend gets out of his car, and they say, "Give me your iPhone and your and your laptop." And he says, "Laptops in the trunk." And some guy with a gun, with a hoodie and a face mask, is sitting there robbing him. And this would happen once every five years. Now they're getting robbed every six months, okay, at gunpoint for their MacBook. And that and that, and this started. It didn't start with COVID. It started in 2009, 2008. You saw the homeless, the tent cities, the economic collapse. And I don't want to talk about that. What I, what I want to, you know, it's negative. It's very disturbing. But but what we're seeing is in the long. Tr so for Skycoin, I'm just sick of this shit. I'm actually, I just want, like right now I'm making a new, I started a new video game. We're doing NFTs. I'm building like a, you know, sort of like this Terraria in space. I'm making a new kitty cash game. I'm trying to get the CX refactored. I'm trying to then get Skywire refactored. I want to launch the VPN software. I want to add multi-wallet support and start adding more coins to our hardware wallet. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted to do since 2018 that I just started to do now. And then I had to deal with this bullshit this, that started recently after what this your New York article. What your investors may be worried about, and I don't know if you recall, when I first reviewed this, I think in 2016 or 2017, I gave Skycoin the label of the Google of crypto. Mm -hmm. The counter argument to that from many investors was they're getting too much scope creep. It's getting too big. And the Skycoin has a still, after so many years, and even with very poor price performance over the last few years, there is still such a very strong following for Skycoin. Mm. Cult is probably too far, going too far, but there's a lot no, of support. I like cult. A lot of support for you, a lot of support <laughs> for the project. But the mm -hmm. counter was maybe there's too much scope creep. Now, you're confident that the project's still moving forward. Have you got enough staff to deal with all of this stuff? Are you controlling those staff? As an investor, should we be comfortable with what's happening with Skycoin? Okay, so the staff issue, we've always had a personnel shortage and it's never ending and people come, people go, there's a lot of turnover rate. Um, a lot of the people, we have employees and they work for us and then they get a job offer for a million dollars a year doing NFTs for some 
fun and what can I do about that? Right. We're going to, we train people, other companies take them. A lot of the people moved on and, and we built a whole industry basically. The people who worked at Skycoin and who left, if you look at all the projects they they worked on, we're talking about 80 ICOs, 20 ICOs, five, ex, five or eight or 10 exchanges, marketing companies, promotion companies. And, and, you know, we built the, we, we were at the core of the whole industry. And we, so one of the things I'm excited about is when we started getting attacked in the New Yorker for legitimacy, they could say whatever they want about us. I don't care. Uh, it doesn't matter actually, but what I'm, what we're doing is we're producing CX, then we're producing our CX platform and then it's going to universities. So we're going to have 80 universities. So you're going to, it's like MIT, Tijin University, University of Florida, uh, you know, some university, the top university in Germany, top university in UK. The, when this, when they're doing their programming for blockchain course, what are they going to be using? There's only three choices and the other two are shit. You can't, you can't use them. So when we go and, and it's like, I have, if I have 60 universities and they're using our software, they're training students, our platform is running, the New Yorker can foam at the mouth all they want, but they attack us. It's the same as attacking Harvard and MIT and the MIT Media Lab and the, and the ACM and the IEEE and the, um, and you know, and I can go out right now and do another 20 peer reviewed papers and they can go fight and bitch about why they don't like my peer reviewed papers. But why do I care what these whiners say? You know, we're going out there, we're building things, we're doing things. And anything that they have that they can do to us, we have 20 responses to crush them. And I think that in the long term, they're irrelevant. What I was surprised is we were attacked by the New Yorker and they had a you know, 12 million and 1.4 million subscribers in New York. And they had 20 people tweet this out on Twitter and no one interacted with the article at all. No one. It was the only person who posted anything was Bradford. And I was shocked really that like what the, I feel like the New Yorker and these mainstream media, they're dead. They're dead. It's like a house and it's empty. There's nothing in there. It's like, a, I, I, and after Trump got out, like their media readership fell 70%. The Drudge Report and Infowars was bigger than CNN before they banned them. They took over Drudge. And they ban Infowars. So if Alex Jones is 50 times bigger than the New Yorker, and that's the biggest media outlet, you can see what these the elite, what the owners of these billion-dollar media corporations are thinking. Where this little guy, like Alex Jones, and his three people in Texas are bigger than CNN, bigger than the New Yorker, bigger than so. There, there was an article I think when um Trump got out that CNN's ratings went down because they didn't actually have anything to report about anymore because they said their whole life was Trump bad, Trump bad. And then when Trump was gone, it's like, well, what are we actually going to report on? And that really affected the ratings, <laughs> allegedly. So with Skycoin, we can say as enthusiasts that the project is not dead. It's still moving forward. And you're confident- We're expanding. That... We're expanding. In 2016, we expanded. 2017, we expanded. 2018, we expanded. 2019, we expanded. 2020, we expanded. 2021, we expanded. Yes, the roadmap but, for but, CX is. But since the issue is, is that if you look at all the coins that were around 2017, with the exception mm -hmm. of maybe XRP is one exception, they all reached their previous all-time highs. All got close to it, or went past it. Skycoin is just. I'm looking at the chart right now. It's just a little bump on the radar. Now, I'm not saying yes. this to be confrontational. I'm saying it's like, really, the people are asking, what are we waiting for? What's next? Well, we did. you have to know, though, we didn't have a marketing team for the last three years. Since 2018, 2000, we were in the crypto winter since the end of 2019. So we've literally almost had zero marketing. So we're considering, like, do we start up marketing operations and how do we organize that? And I think and we tried doing this multiple times and it failed. So there's an issue, which is uh, we don't we didn't do anything on Twitter. We just did development, and a question of how we should do promotion and uh, social media marketing, and what infrastructure on the technical level we have to build out to do that. So I, I think that the um, we just got rid of a lot of the non-essential parts of the company during the crypto winter, and that included the marketing and promotion operations. And I think that you know we're in a market where one Bitcoin will increase the Skycoin price thirty percent. So if we're talking about a serious sustained marketing campaign and it's bringing in 100 Bitcoin per month, 
that's easily 50 X, hundred X, whatever. It's not, it's not really, we had like a small pump group and the price went up to $5 because one little pump group with a couple hundred people promoted it. It went from a dollar to $5. So one of the, the problems I see in the crypto market is that the market primarily appeals to pump and dumpers. They want gamblers, people that want to see returns, crash up, down, you know, and most of the coins are just doing marketing and we're doing more technical development and it's slower we can't release a product every month we have to produce a vpn it takes three years debugging interface build system operation support mobile osx windows bugs speed optimization you know we're gonna spend five years developing a vpn software and then that vpn software is going to be used for the next 50 years right so it's not like you know vpn software isn't going away right it's still going to be there and um, so we're, we're building long-term infrastructure that people use continuously over longer periods. And I think that if we just wanted the price to go up, we would just do marketing. And I'm very hesitant to do that right now because of what the situation we're in. But one of the biggest tools for marketing that we're going to have is going to be the CX platform. Uh, and and then, uh, so there's, we have three new roadmaps. So basically we have the new Skycoin 2.0 and that's a multi-coin wallet support, new wallet, new mobile wallet, hardware integration. That's the platform that we promised to build in 2018 is the full platform. Then we have another thing, which is the CX roadmap. The CX roadmap is massive. It's, it's going to take 20 people and it's blog posts on how to do development. Um, it's a new compiler front end, new compiler middleware, debugging tools, web IDE, programming education games, uh, university partnership to get blockchain programming with the six universities, the consensus implementation, a complete refactoring. And, and it's, our, it's our new version of the Skycoin blockchain. It's a, a refactoring of everything we wanted to change since 2013 that we haven't been able to change. So this is a, almost Skycoin 2.0, basically. A relaunch of Skycoin, change of address formats. A lot of stuff is going into that roadmap. And then the third thing is the Skywire 2.0. And Skywire 2.0 is about VPNs, corporations, virtual cloud, communications, encryption, um, adding a storage mining pool, bandwidth mining pool, uh, DMessage 2.0. So it's about bandwidth storage, computation, uh, the next generation SkyMiner. And each of these projects is bigger than anything else on the, each of the, each of these three roadmaps for Skycoin is, if you look at Helium, it's like, okay, I got LoRaWAN and I got an ARM processor and I have some like, you know, thing in a map and I have a reward, rewards, right? Helium, the whole Helium project is one third the size or one fourth the size of just the, the Skywire roadmap, okay? And that's one roadmap and, this, and then we're looking at 20 people just on that roadmap working. The three areas really for Skycoin, it doesn't sound like it's changed that much, just that we're just evolving with what we were looking at. The three main areas are your hardware, your coding, and then arguably the global infrastructure through the Skywire. Is that, Skywire. Fair, is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. And we have three development roadmaps. The coin, like multi-coin support, wallet support, launching assets on the platform. Is That's the Skycoin, the mobile wallet, desktop wallet, hardware wallet, multi-coin support right here, and the blockchain. That's the Skycoin 2.0 roadmap. Then we have the CX 1.0, the CX chain roadmap, which is the CX programming language, NFT platform, ability to launch coins or scripting language, consensus algorithm, um, education for blockchain programming. That's our other thing. And then on this side is the Skywire roadmap, which is the Skywire hardware, the Skywire network, the VPN, business services, uh, communication, telecom, monitoring, virtual cloud, and, and that roadmap, that whole company, if we were to put that on the stock market, it would be a $2 billion publicly traded company. We're actually looking at spinning out some of this stuff and just creating a company, just doing a hardware production and production. That was going to actually be my next question. Do you keep all these three things together? So this is where I, I really think about the strategic level for Skycoin. I think, do you try and launch all these three things together? Do you compartmentalize them and break them up and make them a separate project in themselves? Or could you phase the release of all of these projects still under Skycoin? What's the plan? We're being pressured to put companies on the stock market because there's a huge stock market bubble. So if we can grab $50 million or 200 million or even a billion dollars in cash and then reinvest that in, in owning a semiconductor production capacity, and we're getting government support and land, and we're gonna have a $2 billion market cap and we have $2 million in cash and we have our own semiconductor production, 
I'm going to, I'm going to murder Qualcomm. I'm not competing anymore with fucking, with freaking uh, Substratum and these shit coins. We're not competing with Bitcoin. We're competing with Qualcomm, Broadcom, Arm, Intel, AMD. We're, you know, I don't want to be stuck in the freaking crypto market. We're, we're on our networking technology. We're not competing with Ethereum. We're competing with Cisco. Okay. We're competing with Cisco MPLS for, if, are you doing Cisco hardware or Skycorn hardware? We're competing with Ubiquity. We're competing with $2 billion publicly traded companies. Okay. In the networking space, just in Skywire. And then on, if we go into hardware integration, now we're competing with Broadcom, Qualcomm, Intel, Texas Instruments, um, you know, big publicly traded companies that are producing DSP, digital signal processing things. If we decide to do a 700 megahertz uh, wireless protocol, we're competing with War LoRaWAN. If we do in Skycoin for our platform, we're competing with Ethereum, Polygon, um, you know, what are the other platforms? You know, there, there's know. a lot of coin platforms. The last one that you said, that's where everyone was really focused and certainly where I was focused on four or five years ago, where the way you were designing it, it was very clear that it was competing with something like Ethereum from what you could build on it mm -hmm. and the utility of it. But now, as I see, as I said, there's these three main branches and two of them aren't really even in the crypto space. They're in the hardware They're not space. in the crypto space. Yeah, no, in the physical and, world. That's right. And that's what a lot of people struggle to deal with. So I'm wondering, I'm, again, I'm looking at your stats here. So we've got a circulating mm -hmm. supply of 21 million Skycoin, max supply of 100 million and total supply of 25 million. Have you ever thought of just simply pumping the coin? Like just as a way to raise capital, you promote the coin, you release some of that Skycoin into the ecosystem, as opposed to going public and listing it on a stock exchange where you now are in the real world per se, it's probably the wrong term to use, but in raising that money, have you looked at just going in the crypto option as opposed to going to the traditional option? So that would be a separate company that would be doing our hardware production. So it would be like Skywire or something, or it'd okay. be like some IC company. So we might have a company just doing the wireless equipment. And we might have another company which is a hardware manufacturer, and we might have another third company that would be a chip or IC manufacturer. So that's part of our consortium structure. It's not part of. Uh, we've always had a we've always had a very poor structure where we have multiple companies funding development or contributing to our code base or using our infrastructure. So we try to build a broad base of companies that are using our infrastructure. Like we had Metallicoin, we had MDL, we had SPACO, SPO, we had Highcoin, we had uh, Lifecoin, we had um, Mauzo coin, we had uh, was uh, MZ coin. We had, um, you know, if you look at the, and each of those was contributing something like one of them wanted, the Russian guys did the mobile wallet, the MDL coin did our mobile wallet. The other ones wanted the hardware wallet for branded marketing. Now we're doing an NFT platform. So now we're participating with gaming companies and if they're in it on our NFT platform, they're going to produce games and they're going to hire developers and the, and the innovations or the improvements that they make are going to get merged back into our platform. So we're trying to build a broad industry base of partners that are using our software and helping fund development instead of just trying to raise everything for the crypto market. I really don't like re relying on the crypto market for funding because I've had a, it's just, it's just too volatile. I government is better. PPP contracts are better. Consortium partners are, are the most reliable for long-term sustainable development because if a company is using your software, they're going to pay one or two or four full-time people to maintain the software, fix bugs, add features, do mobile wallets and so on. And I think the best, and so for me, I prefer to have an Apache like open source foundational model where we have a bunch of 80 companies that we're working with and they're providing software developers and improving different aspects of the ecosystem. So I, I really want to build up the, we have a coin, but the Skycoin doesn't really matter that much within the context of our ecosystem. It's, it'll be used for Skywire, of course. And, it, and it, but it, this is a much more broad based project that's more about building core infrastructure than, than anything else. And, and it's a long term project, it's 20, 30 years. And but if that's the case, it, and, if it's less crypto focused, does that mean as an investor, I should really be looking out on the stock exchange to invest in the Skywire project if that ever launches on the uh, public exchanges? Or am I still, purely from the investor's perspective, am I still better off just buying and holding Skycoin, noting it's still generating Sky hours? I can't really, 
I'm not supposed to comment really on like investment <laughs> or how to do this or what the price is going to be. But, you know, basically, I think that the market is, you know, in terms of the market, it's just boom and bust. Bitcoin's going to go up until. Let, the let me year. rephrase the question then. Then in January, I, we're going to have a massive asked, altcoin I, bubble. I understand what you're saying, but let me rephrase the question. I'm an enthusiast for Skycoin and you. What's the best way I could invest in you? But imagine what is if you want to make money on Bitcoin, how do you do that? What's the best way to make money on Bitcoin? It's it, it it's just it's just so hard to um we're moving away from people buying Skycoin as a speculative asset or like as an investment and into using it for running corporate networks and things like that. So people are gonna be buying Skycoin to get coin hours to use the bat to spend them on bandwidth basically for VPN and uh, basically high bandwidth applications for companies and like uh, data storage and backups. And you have to know, like there's a company $300 million market cap that uh, it's called store J or something. And they're, um, or see a coin S I a C O N and their market cap's huge, but their total bandwidth, their total storage capacity. They're one of these storage coins like Filecoin. Their total storage is only um, maybe 800 terabytes total for the whole network. Yeah, I'm a long-time have... investor in Sidecoin. As I understood, in fact, I even mined Sidecoin. As I understood it, the more people that used it, the more access Sire had to storage because they were, they were mm -hmm. using everyone's storage unit. So, You notice their total capacity is only 800 terabytes. Just in the Skycoin office for our personal use, we have eight times as much storage space as the whole SIA network. And we're not even Google. So, I However, that, that I, storage is centralized where size storage is more about decentralized. Supposedly, but the, you could fit that the whole network on one server basically. So I, what, I, what I'm looking at is when we build these decentralized applications like Telegram and Facebook and so on, and we put them on blockchain, how do you store Hundred billion terabyte, you know all this, all this data. It's it's just crazy the volume of data that you're looking at. Can you tell us a little bit about the roadmaps and what we can expect moving forward? Yeah. So what I want to do personally is, first of all, get rid of these enemies, trash them, and this is, you know, it's it's going to take a bit of time, and it, it's a disruption for what I was doing, which was refactoring CX and Skywire and getting ready for the, you know, CX 1.0 milestone, Skywire 2.0, and. What I want to, what I really want to do is, I'm personally exposed, basically for maybe stuff that happened in 2018, and you know, and uh, so if we get another uh, like CEO or public figure, and I just move into being an advisor, um, and there's nothing really that they can do to go after Skycoin, and you know, everything shuffled up, all the people that were there in the 2018 and 2019 are gone, new people came in, and what I want to do is, I want to set up roadmaps for each of these three areas. And each of these is large enough that I think they need their own CEO, COO or uh, CEO just developing that particular area of the business. Maybe one guy, project manager, uh, three or four project managers and 20 people for each of those parts of the business and that are just responsible for the execution and monitoring uh, for the roadmap and for doing that. And then, uh, and that's independent of any promotional activities or anything we do, which I think we might need to build up like an independent firm doing that and even providing promotional activities to other cryptos because a lot of the infrastructures, um, you know, joint infrastructure with other projects that are on our platform. So we might move the marketing to a sort of collaborative model where other projects and gaming companies and NFT projects and, and gaming projects that we're doing on our platform are going to be using a joint market, doing joint marketing activities through another company set up that isn't Skycoin. So I want to remove all the marketing activity and promotional things from Skycoin set up a company in China and they're an arm's length company. And that's all we do. We do that or something like that already. We don't really actually do internal promotion and that for legal liability, we might set up a spin out trading operations and market making and set up a separate crypto trading fund that won't have any U S investors or any U S involvement, or probably even any U S employees, but um, that is just managing assets on the crypto market because we've had a demand for that so our trading operations might be spun off to a separate unit with its own coo and its own operations we might have a separate marketing unit that's spun off in singapore and in china and maybe it's an office even and then we're going to have the hardware operations and that's going to probably have its own ceo 
Then we have another thing, which is the Skycoin 2.0 thing, which is going to need like five or 10 or 12 people and its own COO managing that roadmap. And then the CX roadmap is massive because it's partnerships with video game companies, university, you know, working with universities to do blockchain education, educational materials. And that's not focused on making money. It's more of just getting CX out there, fixing the language. And, and after we finish the CXO milestone, executing on that. So I want to build up a separate the like COO with the project team with three to four project managers just working on each of these three areas. And then there's a total of five areas. And then on top of that, we have public companies that we're doing. So we, if I want to, so it's not about like, do I invest in these public companies? Because what I do is we get land, we get these relationships, we list on the stock market, we get money and we're doing like a semiconductor equipment manufacturing company. And then I have $200 million that I can then go and throw back into these other projects. So that's just another source of funding for things that we want to do that's independent of the crypto market. So if we can make 200 million there or half a million, a billion there, and then we're able to put that money back into the crypto. And that's an indep that's a profit center because we're making Wi-Fi chips and things like that, or, or uh, um, networking chips for automotive, automobile, uh, local network, uh, you know, networking, um, you know, basically Ethernet controllers for automobile, something, something, something. So it has nothing to do with Skywire, but we also produce chips that are going to be used for our Skywire product line. And that's an independent business unit that would be profitable and listed on the stock market and which also produces components for Skycoin that we can then sell at cost. But we're actually making all of our money producing like this automobile networking chip or something for, the, you know, automobile local networks. And it's a lot of this you know, little chip, like, you know, USB SATA controller chips and things that they want. So um, we're building up a more of a consortium formal fund structure. And then we also, those are our comp the companies within the group, but then there's also partners like a video game company who's using our NFT platform or university doing blockchain education and other uh, groups within the so, you know, that's really what I want to do is I want to, I want to, I always wanted to build up this consortium, this consortium type structure. That's always been my goal. And, I, and I, I've been just so busy the last three years and I'm trying to do that. And I think that would also remove a lot of legal liability and, ex and exposure that we might potentially have if they decide to go after us. So you can imagine that this roadmap is pretty massive, but if you look at like Ameritech, they have 50 product lines or 200 product lines or 200 accusations. Uh, Acquisition, um, acquisitions, and I really wanted to have CNC production, so we could do titanium, aluminum, steel. I wanted to have, you know, machining operations. I want to have laser cutting operations and like planing operations, and I wanted to have uh, semiconductor fabrication eventually, and uh, telecommunication hardware and telecom software, and I wanted to have a blockchain platform. So when when we start getting into these, you would say, well, it has nothing to do with with uh, blockchain right well skywire has nothing to do with blockchain either like we had a we had a meeting with the government and they had mines and they kept having these mine collapses so pretend you had like uh 500 workers in a coal mine right and pretend one branch of the coal mine collapses how do you know if there's workers stuck in the mine and where they were count them in and count them out same as they're doing ships i guess like a human, but a human has to do that in a paper and you don't have a good compliance rate. And if with the mine collapse, where do you know when the mine? So what we wanted was we have Skywire and we, we have access points and we know what the closest access point was and the readings and we're able to track their movement through the mine. So we know when the, per who's in the mine, who left, who entered, where the last point they were seen. So this part of the mine collapses and we know, okay, 497 of the 500 workers are out and um, the last closest position for this worker was here. So we're able to give an overview for the company so they can see where the worker is and if they got out of the mine and also for chemical plants, safety plant, you know, if there was an accident, what worker was in the accident and which, which survived, which evacuated, which were in the area where the incident occurred, right? And, and they need to, and this is for rapid response because you just want the firefighters or the response team to be over to go in there, grab the people, get them out. You don't want to be like, oh, we have to remove all the rubble and the whole thing because we, there might be someone in there, but we're not sure, right? So this type of like personnel tracking, safety systems, um, these are called like PPP agreements where we would be doing this over one company and then 500 mine sites or something, you know? So there's a lot of demand for spin-offs. This is just one, I'm just giving a small example of 
you know, one of the software, and there's other things that already do something like this, but things that we're able to rapidly develop based upon the hardware and software infrastructure that we already have developed. So it's infeasible at this point to do everything that we could possibly imagine doing, of course, because there's nothing that we, in the telecommunications, hardware, blockchain, software, financial services, you know, there's nothing potentially that we couldn't go into or couldn't do. And so this is, uh, but you know, it's a different scale to go to go uh, right now, maybe 15,000 sky miners. I think we have more, we have about as many nodes online as Ethereum. And in a few months we might pass Bitcoin in terms of the node count. And we've been doing very well with the growth and expansion and improving the usability of Skywire nodes, but we haven't turned it into a consumer product where you just hit one button and it just works, where it's like a router or something you just plug in. And we're almost getting to the point of usability where we're able to compete, where you don't have to be a Linux user, where you just run it, it just works, and it's zero conf. And that, and, and it can be deployed by a small business, and there's no maintenance, and it can, and uh, you know, the reliability is the level that it can be used for corporate operations. So that's really where I wanted to go with Skycoin, but I, I also am. I just wanted to take a break and do this video game because that, that's really. Um, I wanted to get the refactoring done for CX, and I wanted to get the CX video game and the NFTs done, just because I'm just sick of this crap. I just, I just, you know, I just needed a break, and and you know, people think I do everything, but I actually don't know a lot of what happens in Skycoin. And there's other managers, other developers, and they often don't tell me anything. Like they say, oh, I thought the VP I said like the VPN is going to be released next week. And that's what they told me. And then it's always delayed and all oh, two weeks. Oh, we found another bug. Oh, the OS X installer doesn't work. Oh, the blah, 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 blah. You know, and it gets released, but it takes six months. And I, um, you know, I, I'm not personally involved with everything the way that people think I am. It's more like there's a roadmap and it could take a year or two years as a project manager, then there's developers and they work constantly at things. And it might take uh, three months to get a prototype working but we might spend the next two years fixing bugs, right? And adding interface and this and that. And so when I say it's gonna be done in three months, I talk about the prototype and it is done in three months, but then the bug fixes and building consumer product and polishing it up and stability. And if you look at the Skycoin wallet, you really see how our development works constantly over three, four, five years from the beginning to the end, to the features, to the point that we ran out of things to add. And then once we're out of things to add, we do a whole new version with the 2.0 and multi-coin and redo the whole interface and the wallet storage format. And, and, you know, and it becomes a much more expand. We're on this, what you call like a spiral development model for a lot of these things. So it took two years to go or four years to go all the way around the spiral till we do a reset and do the next generation. So overall, you're comfortable with where Skycoin is at the moment, noting there's a couple of hurdles along the way but you're comfortable where it is at the moment and confident this project will still succeed, perhaps bigger than what we expected before. I think people really don't even understand how much we've succeeded. And some of the coins that are just forks of Skycoin have a billion dollar market caps. And it was just because of marketing. Like you look at like how high coin and like SPO and, and the different things that other people have done based on the Skycoin platform. But one of the mistakes we made was we didn't integrate these very successful coins back into our platform. We should have done a multi-coin wallet and a standard mobile wallet and hardware wallet and done cross-branding and promotion. As a financial asset, I don't know about altcoins. I really don't. It's a, you know, people are like, how do I make money? And how do you make money trading? How do you do this? I think that people that have set up SkyMiner nodes have made a pretty reliable, consistent, you know, I wouldn't say get rich off it, but they've done pretty well. And in terms of, you know, getting back to the all times high and how we would do that, that's a different pro that's a marketing problem. It's not really a problem with our roadmap and it's not really a problem with our development. It's just a marketing exercise because really the price has nothing to do with the fundamentals. The price is completely decoupled from any reality or any development. And the price is based on a bunch, a very small number of speculators gambling money. And it's really a, I feel like the altcoin market is gamblers. It's gamblers, it's a slot machine, it's a casino. I really don't see any real world non-speculative investment in blockchain, like in, in these blockchain companies or 
you know, the prices don't go, uh, don't go up or down for economic reasons. They go up and down because people want to get rich and this pumped and that pumped. And, um, you know, and that's a different game than sustainably funding technical development, you know, running pump groups and talking to the pump groups and orchestrating the pump groups and news releases and uh, traders and trading events. And, uh, you know, I really am sort of sick of that side of the market. And what, but anyway, what I see is that Skycoin's primary role is going to be as, as, a, as a, basically as a form of primary liquidity, because when we're building this platform, one of the things that OKX, um, Bitfinex, Polynex, Kraken, we saw that they were either bought up, shut down, had their bank accounts removed, or other very tightened regulatory scrutiny. And what we're seeing is like, you know, Kraken gets their bank accounts removed from Europe. And that's the only reason to use Kraken was you can get euros in and out. And they took, and then you SEPA and they are doing massive crackdowns on the gateways for crypto, getting everything in through Coinbase or this one or that one so that the government can see every coin, where it's coming from, where it's coming in, where it's going out. And it's even getting to the point, if you look in California, they're banning GPUs capable of doing crypto mining. They say, oh, the power usage is too high. And they were using green energy as an excuse for why you're not allowed to buy this GPU in California. Oh, it uses too much energy. And the reality is that it allows people to generate an income at their home, which is not controlled by the government. That it's not, you know, they want you to be completely dependent upon them, the government check to whatever. They don't want you to be able to generate an income and live yourself or live independently or have any form of money not controlled by the government or have any type of food or resource that isn't rationed or controlled by the government. So you're in a situation of like state censorship to the point that they're going to outlaw GPUs used by video gamers because they can mine crypto when they're not playing video games. Do you know how ridiculous that is? How absurd? How, it's like this Nazi control freak, like totalitarian state. And so I'm watching a lot of these, a lot of these trends, and I really don't like. I, we're going to accomplish all the technical goals that Skycoin set out to do. You know, no matter how long it takes and what happens, it doesn't matter. It's going to get done. It doesn't matter what they do to us. It's going to get done. But um, I don't know personally if I want to get in the middle of this shit fight, this shit show with the. You know, I don't want Skycoin maybe to end up like Gab did or Parler did and have to fight off these control freak, you know, Nazi, you know, wannabe Pol Pots saying you can't own a, a GPU because you need to be dependent on the state. You can't grow your own food because you need to be dependent on the state. You need you can't uh, have your own money because you need to be dependent on the state. And they're, they're and they're centralizing control now at such a rate. They're saying like all the Every bank transaction in the U.S. has to be reported to some government agency like IRS in real time instead of at the end, you know, every transaction, every penny you spent, what you spent it on, you bought a bag of M&Ms, it needs to go to the IRS. And they're just trying to put in all of these absurd laws and controls. And really what crypto is about is about evading those, you know, it's about evading those controls. So the sky, you know, I'm sort of, I think we're going to jump into the fray eventually. I don't know what the time to do that is, like what the time to pull the trigger is. Right now, I just want to do technical development, get the universities. And I think maybe once the university students start developing apps and they get on this platform and they start launching their own coin or doing their own telegrams and YouTubes and things like that, I think that it's going to offload a lot of that from us. We won't be, it won't be necessary for us to do those things anymore. It'll take a lot of the development load off. So I'm developing this platform and doing these refactors. And afterwards, we have a lot of leeway or strategic options for which direction we can go in. And I haven't committed to that, you know, to that direction, only that we're going to finish the platform. And then once it's done, what people will do with it, how it'll be used, I don't know. But I think the core is going to be CX as a scripting language. Blockchain is a, just a database for storage. And the core is going to be, you know, store file storage and communication, which is Skywire. And if we have all of those cores, we're basically a self-contained, we have a self-contained infrastructure that we can do almost anything we want to do for video games to video streaming sites to telegram to you know messaging apps and 
So I don't, I don't know. But then how, you know, you say like, how does that go back to the Skycoin price? I think once Skycoin becomes a primary liquidity asset, which we're looking for like, you know, DEX trading, um, Skycoin becomes more like a stable coin or like sort of a standard for backing or trading or interchange on the, on this type of system that we're building. And I don't know if it should be Skycoin or if we should have like a synthetic, like a stable coin or USD type contract that is backed by Skycoins that are sort of staked so that people can hold the Skycoin asset, but yet issue other assets based on it with collateral. I think once we have, I don't like Tether because it's not backed, but if we were able to use a crypto coin and we were able to create contracts and use coins that are just sitting in people's wallets to act as a backing, for other synthetic assets that can be used uh, for trading activity um, or for settlement. I don't know. I think that I think what we're doing with blockchain today, how blockchain exists today is dead end because it doesn't have credit creation. It doesn't have monetary expansion. It doesn't have, um, it's missing a lot of the features that you would need to have an, uh, you know, an actual economic system that expands and contracts with the economic activity. Are there any and, coins out there that you're worried about that are a scam at the moment? Any particular scam coins, scammy coins? You know, they're all scams. Like the, mm -hmm. it's just pump and dumps. It's the price goes up, they buy it, they dump. And it, you know, honestly, the whole market is a bunch of gamblers. It's like Forex traders that went into crypto. I don't see a lot of long-term, like would you, what coin would you be comfortable holding today that you think would be around in 20 years? Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, hopefully Skycoin. I don't even know about like Cardano and the, these, like a Bitcoin, maybe, maybe. Ethereum, maybe. What about XRP? Problem with XRP <laughs> is they're headquartered in the US. Yeah, and... that, that, that was probably the biggest mistake, building it in America. Well, in, the, in our early discussions, when you're saying, you know, America's kind of squeezing themselves out of the game, it, it's tragic, I, I think. The states is, is regulating itself into extinction and that the world's not going to wait for america the world's going to move forward and do its thing so i can see you're tired we've been going for hours here before we close off is there anything that you want to chuck out there with respect to how the viewers can find out more about yourself skycoin skywire or any other projects coming up i don't know <laughs> whatever just go to the website i don't know You're tired. i'm just sick of i'm sick of i'm sick of talking about like the sky coin and promotion and we, i wanted to get into the other article like the like the daily stormer response to the new yorker and the neo-nazis and the secret recording from bradford stevenson and the other drama with this um I don't know how many hours, but anyway, we don't, we don't have time. So I'll just save that for another one. We can do that on another one, but I would suggest that just don't give them a platform. Don't promote what they're saying. It's funny though. It's funny though, because yeah. they're agreeing with the New Yorker. Synth, I'm very grateful for your time. This is another epic one. For those of you who haven't met me, I'm Adam Stokes. Check out my channel here on YouTube, as well as the crypto.land where I talk about all things crypto. Synth, thank you so much for joining us.